guys, welcome to the channel. It's Adam with ND72, rocking out my cool little ND72 shirt. So today we're gonna, I would say, make the car a little bit more efficient and get more low-end power on the SLK32. What I got here from VTEC, a clutch, a pulley, 65 millimeter, I'm gonna have to double check, 65 millimeter clutch leap pulley. And then also, we got a nice tune. So I got my laptop out, so we're gonna get a tune from him. I already sent him uh, some of my data and all that stuff, so you should be making one right now. And then we're going to do the tune, do the pulley delete, and see if it actually makes a huge difference. I'll show you what I got right now. So right now we got the SLK, and we have this. I'm pretty sure this is from, they bought it from Eurocharge. This is a 65 more millimeter clutched pulley that came with the car. It's been on here from the records they have like four or five years. So it seems to still be working, but I just want to delete that system and drop some LBs and get a cool little whine noise. So we're going to pull the belt off, pull this off, and measure it, and then try to see to figure out how to pull that clutch off. Shouldn't be that bad. So I've never done the clutch delete, but easily enough, step one, remove the belt. Step move two, remove that pulley. So this bolt should be a 13. I'm going to try to pull it out and make sure I don't drop anything or break any of the dials or anything like that. Hopefully it'll be pretty easy. So what people usually do is they'll put clips over there and just try to hold this pulley. I'm going to see if the gun will just whiz this off enough. Bam! Super easy. Now I'm going to kind of put my hands down so I don't drop nothing. So we got that bolt off and let's see if this pulley will come right off. No. Let me get a screwdriver and just start like uh, moving this clip and moving a couple things off. So once I got like the front cap, <clears throat> once I got the front cap off, the pulley is literally slid right off. I just had to do a little bit of just tapping. It was just on there for a and while. And I'm told to make sure do not break these pins. And nothing weird like that. But, I mean, the pulley still seems pretty good if anyone wants it. If anything, I would just say normal maintenance is just like putting a new bearing in there. You could definitely feel a little bit of play. Or not play, but it's not rotating the bestest in that bearing. If anything, these are pretty easy to replace. Just the bearing. I'll be throwing this up on sale. Uh, it's pretty sure it's a 65 millimeter pulley not bad not bad at all oh yeah looking eh, you can feel a little bit of resistance in that pulley but i'll throw it on sale whatever someone wants to offer me we'll make a deal now from what i understand this drum is a little bit hard to get off because they're pressed on so you got to get a puller so i ordered a puller we're going to put it on there and then just kind of like whiz it off and just be very careful not to, not to really break anything So looking at like the comparison of the pulleys, like 100%, that is so much lighter. Easily, I don't have to measure this, but I think these are like four or five pounds. This is like under a half a pound. Uh, they're, they're the same exact like diameter pulley, so I shouldn't really be adding any more boost. I'll just be adding it earlier and dropping some rotational weight. But definitely like the, <clears throat> the VTEC stuff, you got a little logo there, I mean. It seems pretty quality. Uh, hopefully it'll all go in pretty easily. And it was, I mean, for being out of the country, fast shipping. Great. He's always had great customer service and all that stuff. So hopefully I make some of my money back by selling that if anyone wants it. I would recommend you throw a new bearing in there. I mean, if you really want, I can look and see how much bearings are. If someone makes me an offer, I'll take it out and rebuild it for them. It looks like literally it's just a C-clip. Bearing goes in there and you're done. You just got to find the right bearing. All right. So... <clears throat> I'm going to give you a little rundown of how to pull this off uh, before I show you the video and all the stuff that happened. So you're going to need some gas. I got MAP gas. You could also use propane. This is a little bit. This gets hotter quicker, so it's going to let you heat up the shaft faster without uh, heating up the part of the supercharger. So you can just at Lowe's or whatever. Propane is just as fine. This just costs a little more. It gets hotter. And then basically what you're removing is the drum, and then this is the magnet. So. And then the pulley sits right up on there just like that. That's how the whole setup's going to look on your car. So you're going to move your pulley already, which should be pretty simple enough. And then you're going to set up your puller. So what I had to do with this is a six-inch puller. Uh, you just, it's pretty up and self-explanatory. You're basically going to rig it up and to grab the sides. And then this part is going to suck in there. You can also use a four-inch puller. Whatever one you feel, I mean, I just got that kit off of Amazon. So how when mine first pulled out, it pulled off the drum first, which just went bam, just like that. That's kind of, this is how it should come out, the drum first. Now, like I'm going to show, so I think why my car was damaging 
I basically made all this worse than it actually is because I was picking away with it. Uh, this part of the drum was cracked, so I think that was kind of messing up my pulley anyway, so this stuff had to go. But also, so when this sits on the car like this, once you get to this part of pulling it out, you do the same thing with the puller and all that stuff, but there's a C-clip that sits in here. Make sure you pull it out. I forgot until the last minute. As you can see, I bent it, but that's trash anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. Actually, apply the heat. You're going to take your torch. You're going to have your puller on here. So, I mean, even if you can't get a puller like that, I think I got a few other pullers I used. I can't remember where to put them So if you use a four inch puller, which I did at the end, and if you see with the four inch, I had to grind over here down a little bit to get in there. So once you get the puller all rigged up and all that stuff and it's in there, you're not, do not crank down on it. Just kind of put pressure on it. And once you put enough pressure, you'll see it all in the video. You're just gonna fly heat right here. This shaft right here, you do not want to get the shaft inside hot. You want over here hot. So you heat all that stuff up and then you'll hear the pop, like you'll see in the video. This is just to give you a quick little rundown and then you can see all the mess ups I did. So the big mess ups I did, so you don't forget, the C-clip, take that out after you remove the drum. And then also, here, bring the camera over. I'll show you what else I broke, which it's not that bad, but I'm definitely gonna have to replace it. So if you start driving and you start smelling poop, that's supercharger oil leaking out. So there's a seal right here. That's a supercharger front seal. That mine got a little bit damaged. I think when I was pulling and I didn't take that C-clip off. I think I damaged it a little bit. They're like 30 bucks. You get them from Needs Wings. It's not that big of a deal. I got one coming. So, and it literally, to replace it, it takes maybe, for me, I've done them, it takes about like three or four minutes to replace it. And also the huge benefit, if you look, this is like a lot of crap. Like, to feel this, I'm gonna have to weigh it, but I'm pretty sure that's probably like five to 10 pounds right there of rotational weight from this whole assembly. And this is not even the factory one. This is also 65. That one over there, that's a half a pound, that clutch elite one. And you don't, you don't worry about the wires getting pinched anymore or nothing. So big, big benefit about that. I'll put a link to the cooler kit I got. You can try to use the big one or use the four inch one like I did. It's literally up to you. And then I'll try to put a link to some map gas. I don't think you can order this stuff offline. I'm pretty sure you have to go to Lowe's or Home Depot to go pick it up. But we're going to go to the video now. I'm going to show you how I did it and a lot of my mess ups. So with this rig, it's gonna slowly start pulling out and you'll start hearing a pop. I've been trying to get it on film, but it's just too hard to range up. But when you start heating it up, remove the towel. And then heat it up and you'll hear a pop, let it cool down and start over again. Did you hear the pop? I'll tell you, just keep doing that and it's inching out slowly. But I think this is one of the safer ways to do it. Because if you just do the puller and you just keep cranking, I'm pretty sure you're gonna start damaging a lot of stuff. So when you're cranking, it's uh, I mean, you get whatever puller you want. This is a six inch puller with a 14 on it. And I'm not using a breaker bar or anything crazy and I ain't that strong. So I know I'm not gonna break it. But one thing I do recommend is do a lot of padding right here and use this as your brace. When I didn't at first, see I kind of damaged that. That was 100% my F up. And I'm slowly learning how to get it done a little bit easier for next time. But I did damage a, I did damage that a little bit, but I think I'll still be good for the oil cooler. But we're just going to keep cranking away and keep heating. Keep going. And once you get after a certain point where, like, literally you could hear it, like, turn and pop with just, like, a little bit of ease. Oh, pff, that was even the last one. I didn't even know it. Then you don't even know to use the gas anymore. But, ah! I don't think this is hot, but let's just... Ha-cha-cha-cha-cha. Stay down there, mister. Oh, got that right off of there. Oh, that's definitely hot. Uh, I don't think I did any more other damage. That's just crap that I was underneath and spraying on there. And then got to get this one off next. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get that one off. I think the same way we'll do it is basically heat it up and pull it. So this next part I'm going to show you. I get stressed so much. Do not do it like this because I started doing it like this. I went for the torch. I had a little bit of heat and then I went bing. Oh, crap. So let me show you the part you don't, well, I'm going to show you the clip and then explain it. So, bam. So I did check it with the gun. This one is still, make sure I'm not like perching anything, but it still looks pretty hot. So um, it is coming out really effing easy. 
Okay, so I got so effing lucky and figured it out just in time. I was like, hmm, I can't remember. There was something weird about this. So to get this part off, which is the magnet, you see how I kind of started pulling it? I bowed it out a little bit, so I most likely damaged this one. So that's not going to go on. Oh, get off the rag. This is what's under there. It's a C-clip. I was going, and I'm like, man, wait. I remember there was a C-clip somewhere. So it sits in there, and it goes on the groove right there. So... Just get the C-clip off. You might be able to like literally pry it and break it, but I did it like a few pumps as you saw in the video, and I was like, oh crap. So also, now I know why I kept disengaging and engaging. I had to do this. I didn't even know it. So this damage is not from me. So once I pulled off the other pulley, I started seeing a crack there, and I took a little screwdriver and I picked it away. So I'm pretty sure this damage is maybe why I wasn't fully engaging and disengaging. I kept getting that like shaking. But I'm doing the clutch delete, and now this stuff is trashed anyways. I mean, the magnet's probably still good. I don't know. I definitely kind of bend that off, but if you do it how I showed you, well, not that one. This should come off pretty easy, because it was coming off. You saw you would hear the pops, and you just got to be effing patient with it. And don't get like a three-foot breaker bar and just go. Uh, I also had plenty of water, and the gas I was using was map gas. I probably already said that. And then I'm going to clean this all off and scrub it, because it looks a little dirty back there. And then the pulley will go right on. See? I don't even really... I'm probably going to clean this all off, and I will have to probably heat this up maybe a little bit to get it all the way on. Yeah, oh no. It goes on there pretty nice, and then that's... looks pretty, pretty sharp. I might try to get two new pins. I think uh, Needs Wings has them. I didn't see them in the kit that uh, VTech sent me, but I'm going to relook in the package. And then also, so this right here, I looked in there, none of the threads are messed up, but I'm going to go get a tap anyways, and just trace it, just in case debris probably got in there throughout the time, but yeah, like, that looks so much effing cleaner. So after all said and done, you get rid of this heavy clutch style, and then you get rid of the drum. That's called the drum, and this is the magnet. You get rid of all that extra weight. I'm actually going to weigh all this, and then compare it to this. This is like a half a pound, maybe. I'm going to have to get the scale out, and I'll weigh it all, but it's a noticeable difference of rotational weight. So it should help this supercharger spin up quicker and get a little bit more boost. And this is basically just the same as going fixed. Just you dropped all that LBs. And if you do damage little things, you can't really re reverse it that easy. With a fix, you could just pull off and put on. But I do might want to try to get two new dowels. But pretty, pretty happy. And then my supercharger still spins pretty nice. Like I don't know if you were hearing that noise before. I think it was all that stuff behind me that I removed. But also I want to... Also, and it's probably a good time to drain the oil on this bad boy. I'm going to have to go, I'm pretty sure it's that bolt right there, but I'm going to go double check and then put some uh, jet oil in here. I'm going to clean this all up before I put it on with a little brush. But not bad, not bad. I just built up the pulley, and it's really not that hard to do. You just, if you can see in there, the little dowels go right in there. You just tap them on with like a little rubber mount, they go right in. And then I put the washer on. I'll probably end up cleaning up this washer too, make it look all shiny. Because I'm, gonna, I'm cleaning up right here right now. So I already started. See how it's like polished? I'm just taking like a little uh, cookie. And it's going to go right over here. Clean up as much as I could. Make it look kind of nice. Not bad. Good mating service and all that stuff. I mean the pulley goes right here. But still. Make that look nice. Well I could have been spending like another 30-40 minutes just polishing everything. But nah it ain't that bad for a quick little job. I got the little top washer done. And even just with the dial pins man it, it holds it pretty good. So I'm going to give it a little tap to make sure it's all the way in there. It felt like it went in there pretty much all the way with no heat or no nothing. Pretty good. And then I'm going to, oof, it's about to storm hella bad out here. I don't know if you could hear that. So I'm going to go get the uh, bolt that it came with, put some Loctite, and keep going. So I threw some blue Loctite on there. Oh, it's definitely getting bad out. <laughs> so we're going to start threading it in. Goes in pretty good. Uh, I'm going to have to put the camera down because I do got to kind of brace this. So now I can actually crank it down, and then I will look up the torque specs and torque it. Bam! Got it all back on. I don't got the fan on yet, but that is looking pretty, pretty sweet. Not bad. I am going to, with this like this, I'm going to re-torque it. I'm going to check the torque one more time, because now it's, it's definitely braced for me. And this pulley kit, the, the pulley saver kit I got from Needs Wings, I think it's going to help out so effing much. That's another big benefit. It looks pretty cool. And the kit that I got... Uh, I told them what size pulley, and I'm pretty sure I could go even smaller than this, and this kit will still work. I'm going to have to double check with Rob. I might have to get a different belt. But so far, I got a 65 millimeter. 
I'll have to double check. I'm pretty sure he sent me a 65. And it fits good. Now I'm just waiting on the tune from VTech. I sent them all my stuff, so it should be literally any time now. But I'm going to zip tie these uh, that plug up somewhere. Make it a little bit more cleaner so it's not really like... Uh, this is from the supercharger. And then go for a drive. See how it feels. Hopefully he'll get it to me before the rain hits, but I don't know. I know it looks sunny over there. I don't know why, but it's definitely thunder or getting there to hit it. Not bad, not bad at all. Clean up my little hands. Oof, those lights still look pretty good. Not bad. All right, so we got the pulley on. I had the tune put on VTEC. I don't got the fan in yet, because I'm going to do the first fire up and make sure there's nothing stupid happening, no wobbling or nothing. So I'm going to go fire up. Shut the car off. I'm gonna put the fan in, double check my torquing, and make sure everything's good. Then we'll go for a ride. <laughs> All right. All right. So we've been driving the car for a little bit, and I've been doing like five or six pulls with the new cooling system, the split cooling, the bigger bigger heat exchanger, the intakes, and look at we're 109, and it is 98 degrees out in Florida. So we're gonna do a quick pull. And this is with the clutch delete with the VTEC, but I still don't have my ESP, so we gotta roll into it and do like a 40 pull. Watch it. So see those air intake temps are like, before they used to be 160, 170. They're like nothing now. one more quick pull and see if we can make sure those temps stay down try to do it 20 I don't know if it'll even hook up no it just spun I gotta get this ESP fixed yeah cause you just felt like it throw you back and just stop it alright We'll turn back around, but even look, we're doing so cool on this hot of a day. I mean, like, just doing this is probably the 15th pool we did, and it's still like nothing. All right, we're gonna pull back in and check everything just to cover your butt before you do this. If you need to get that seal, if you break the seal like I did, it's the oil we need the jet. Mobile Jet Oil 254. You get this at Needs Wings or even like Amazon. A lot of places have it. It's like 20, 30 bucks. Not bad. And you'll definitely need it if you piss out oil like I did. I didn't even really piss out oil. It probably was a minute amount because I did like, I mean, you'll see in the video, probably like 30 pulls, but we were getting seepage through it. So I'm going to stop driving the car until I get that. All right. Hey guys, hope you liked the video of me doing the pulley on my SLK. Now, I am probably going to eventually go a little bit smaller, pull it, but right now I'm going to run it like this and just see how I like it until I get bigger fuel injections and do a couple things like that. And a big thanks to VTech from Georgia. He's very responsive. The pulley, it works great, and it was very reasonable priced. Fast effing shipping. He had them in stock, and anyone who's ever dealt with him knowing that like his tunes are pretty good, and like you can message him, and he's very, very helpful. That's why I got to say great customer service with him, and... I, I always been a fan. He's one who tunes all my cars now. None of them are Euro Church tune anymore. Like if anyone knew, that's what this was when I bought it. Um, also, uh, big thanks to Needs Wings. Needs Wings helped out a, a lot with this car. Rob over there, and the cooling is on par. And I don't even have an in tank or nothing. This is just his parts and all that stuff. So, or not in tank. I mean trunk ice box, which I will be getting for that car. And uh, big thanks. Love the car so much. I am going to get that, so that little seal is what was leaking. I'll show you what it is. So like I said, this is the seal that was leaking. Um, I did order a new one. I have two coming. I got one, this is from Needswing. This is this style, if you could actually see. And then I got one of a different style coming in. 
I'm going to see which one will work to do it. I probably could still drive the car with it, but it's just the smell smells like poop if anyone ever smelled it. It smells like farm equipment and all that stuff. And I just don't, I'd rather not risk it. I have plenty of other cars, so this won't be down for maybe a week until I fix that. But thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you guys hit like, subscribe, share with people. I mean, let's try to blow it up. You know what I mean? If anyone wants, I got some ND72 shirts here. So hit me up, guys, and thanks for watching. Yeah. Dino. Trying to cover the squirrel. It's your water heater. Leave the hose on? Alright, ready? Yep. I'm still thinking you're too much on an angle, because how do you see this stuff? <laughs>